Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here and welcome to part two of Farming Fridays where we'll be continuing the development of Far Corner Farm. All right, I've been really looking forward to revisiting Far Corner Farm and doing a bit more work on the area because it's uh, really coming together already uh, as one of my favorite areas of the city. Uh, but a couple of bits of housekeeping, first of all. Uh, thanks for all your suggestions on the placement of my three minis in an Italian job type scene. Uh, I will be doing one of those, but not just yet, because I need a few pieces in order to do uh, a really good job of it. But thanks for that. I haven't forgotten it. Uh, other things I haven't forgotten is the placement of all the minifigures that we did uh, on Wednesday. Uh, I'm still going through all of those comments because you've just <laughs> written me loads and loads of long suggestions, which is awesome. So we'll get to that in due course as well. So as for today, I think we should start with some of the amendments that you suggested from last time. Uh, and there are a few that are very simple, such as renaming this fertilizer tank at the back here that's blue as a milk tank, which I thought was a really good idea. No bricks were required, uh, just a change of name because it's right next to the milking shed, of course. Um, and it makes a lot more sense because you would have uh, a big tank for the milk. So I'm going to use that idea. Thanks for that. Uh, another well, a pair of ideas that quite a few people suggested was to do with the cattle grid. So I'll just pick up here. Uh, and it was to add a white stripe to the middle of the road, just to continue that. And that looks really good. Uh, there were a few that I removed from a piece that was in one of the old sort of tiny racers sets. So I got all the road markings uh, on an old sheet from one of those. And I just used one of the stripes in the middle there. So thanks for that. <laughs> Uh, I also added a few bits of green underneath the cattle grid to represent some wild things growing. Uh, I didn't really want them sticking out uh, vertically too much, but I still think that has added a nice subtle detail. So thanks for all of you suggested that as well. So put my tripod back on the table. Right, so in no particular order, other ones included adding a nice quad bike to the scene because all farmers in the modern day ride around their uh, big uh, area on an ATV or something like that. So this is the jungle ATV from set 30355. But I think this particular one is a very good example. Uh, heaven knows that uh, Lego gives us enough ATVs and little quad bikes. Um, but this one I think is quite a good one. So thanks very much for that idea. Uh, another idea was to add a owl to the barn uh, and I don't think I'll be able to put that straight in the barn because we've got a man sort of blocking the uh, entrance way taking in the hay but I do think we'll be able to put it on the roof uh, so we can refer to this as a barn owl from now on so thanks very much for that uh, and then a few people suggested a vet scene uh, and they suggested that I had a vet from the series minifigures uh, having their hand up the back of a cow uh, and I thought that I could do that, but I quite like the cows in the scene that they're in back here at the milking shed. Uh, and I did actually discover another pig that I hadn't added to the scene. So I thought that this vet could have its hand up the back of the pig, kind of like that. Uh, maybe to check if the pig was pregnant or to uh, maybe examine it if it had a medical condition. Um, and that always seems to be the sort of theme that's going on on vet-based programs on the TV so I think that would be a scene that would be uh, very appropriate for this farm so I can add that as well so thanks for that one uh, and probably the most common uh, comment was uh, to add a lot of mud to my pig area which is far too clean at the moment to the sty uh, so basically just mocked up here on a spare piece of base plate I've just added some patches of mud made out of tiles and mainly um, brown ones, of course. I didn't really want too much brown in case it blended in with the fence itself, but I think it is necessary to have some mud, so I'll transfer those across. And I think we might have to try and make this area just a little bit bigger uh, to accommodate everything else. I mean, it might be we have to have the uh, vet scene actually outside the sty. Maybe they brought the pig out for examination. But anyway, uh, thanks for everyone who suggested mud. <laughs> 
And then probably the second most common comment was to do a style, which is one of those steps over a fence. And it was to use on this small piece of fence that was going in between the um, cattle grid and the main sty. So to do that, I'm just going to add a one by one round brick onto either side uh, and then add a one by two tile on top of that uh, and then slide it right in until it meets the fence itself. Uh, and if I do that on both sides, then I think it's a very simple but very effective technique that looks very crossable indeed. So yeah, thanks for uh, making me consider that idea. Now another common suggestion was to add a farmhouse to this scene. Uh, and I just think with all the little things that we're adding here, a few more that I've come up with, and the fact that we want a great big field out the front, we aren't going to be able to do a farmhouse. Uh, and that also is because it kind of clashes with one of my design rules, which is no residential. Uh, and I just find residential a bit boring compared with other sort of more commercial elements in the city. So uh, after all, it would just be a big house that was located on a farm. So I think we'll have to assume that there is a farmhouse, but maybe it's through the wall a bit, uh, just out of sight of the area that we're showing in Brick Nottingham. But that doesn't mean we can't add a house for some chickens, which was another suggestion. So I've just done a very simple boxy build with a bit of a dark blue roof. Uh, I have actually ordered some red um, slope pieces so I can change this roof to red so it kind of matches all of my other buildings. But nonetheless, there's one of those little walkways that the uh, chickens can use to get in as well. So I think that will be a good addition that I can add in a moment. Uh, and then, oh, we're doing. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and then there were a few suggestions of having somebody collecting the eggs. So you can use these kind of little siren pieces in white to represent eggs. So thanks very much for that. But also the encouragement to use the really big egg from last time. So I thought if I put that in his other hand, he could be looking at that with this amazed face going, what, what, how did, how did that come out of a chicken? So uh, I think that's a really fun scene to add. So I have to make sure that's somewhere nice and visible. So thanks for the encouragement to do that as well. Right, so that's a lot of bedoings. Uh, I think I need to spend some time adding all of this to their right locations, their final locations. Uh, and then we can get on with doing the new stuff that I've come up with. All right, so here's the changes all in place with the white stripe on the road and the green bits underneath the cattle grid. There is the styles over the fence. I think that's looking really good. I might add a walker to that just to make it look even more in keeping. And there's the walking sign, of course, from last time. Uh, then we extended the pig pen just to make it a little bit bigger so we can see those new mud patches uh, from further afield. And I think they look really good. Further afield, eh? Yeah pun not intended. Uh, and there is our new scene with a pig and he's on a table, or rather she is on a table, uh, just to make the examination a lot easier. And the vet is very jolly. And the uh, farmer there has got a wonderful uh, goatee and mullet. So I think he looks really fantastic. I really like him. He looks good fun. So there we go. What else did we do? We added the owl to the top of the barn. We added the quad bike underneath the barn, just parked up. And then here is all of our chickens in the new scene with the chicken coop. Chickens out, uh, out the front. And there's our man with one normal sized egg and one, wow, crazy big ostrich sized egg, but from a chicken. Can you imagine one of those producing that? But that is a really good funny scene as well. I think you'll agree. So yeah, brilliant. All of those in place, all crammed in next to each other because I want to do uh, a really big field scene out of the front, uh, just so we're kind of looking across the field into the rest of the farm. Uh, but for me to know exactly where I can put the field, I think the next thing we're going to have to do is make the outer fence along these two sides. So uh, let's do that next. I do think you need to fence off the farm just because uh, otherwise you might have things escaping, even though they could go through the opening there. Uh, but you also might have people from the fairground that will be to our right kind of drifting in. Uh, so we want to prevent that. Uh, and what I'm using is these eight long kind of two bar fence panels. And they're really useful and really good. Quite hard to get hold of, but um, 
I think they're well worth it. And I'm just separating those with uh, three tall uh, one by one bricks. Uh, so I think that looks really good. But the sad thing is I've actually got one too few. So I've got a gap there. Now, I did think that maybe there would be the occasional opening uh, in between uh, whole stretches of fence. So what I might do is use the two of these sort of more lattice shaped fence pieces to act as two halves of a gate that can open and allow, uh, well, things to move from field to field if necessary, because I do think that the uh, ground that the fair fairground is using when it's in town probably does belong to the farmer so he's uh, going to need access to that for pasture land maybe for the cows uh, later on in the year but for now I think the gate would be firmly closed but actually gives us a bit of contrast along that whole length so let me show you that a bit more closely yeah I think that looks really good actually just a little bit different and shows a, an opening there and I just moved the hen house away from the edge of that fence just a little bit, uh, but the scene is still very visible. So that's really good. I think you'll agree. Uh, another thing I wanted to do to this fence, you'll see that I've got one fence post missing here, and it's because I wanted to use a, a decorated tile, two by four, advertising some carrots and apples for sale. Uh, so I'm just going to put that in this gap here. Now that tile actually comes from uh, the supermarket suitcase set 10684. Uh, and since it's advertising carrots and apples for sale at the roadside, I thought I'd put a little crate of that produce, well, specifically carrots. Uh, so I've got a little yellow crate and I've made some carrots. And the way I make them is using an orange unicorn horn, kind of like Unikitty has on her head. Uh, with one of those uh, friends bracelet pieces that are used for lots of sort of flowers and so on on the end. So if I have loads of those, I can put them in a kind of honesty uh, box type crate for people who are passing to consider purchasing. So I'll just put that there and I think that'll look really good. Yeah, bit of contrast as well. So that brings us right up to this opening for the gate. Uh, and I did have one suggestion, which was to actually kind of do a kind of loop over the top just to make it more of a gate and maybe have a sign on the top. Uh, now the sign might be a bit difficult because uh, I'm not gonna be able to have something that says far corner farm without going bespoke. And I don't tend to do that because I think it's a slippery slope. Um, so what I'm going to do is look through all of my stickers in my sticker collection and see if I can find anything appropriate to kind of put on the top of a, a three-sided square for an entranceway. Wish me luck. So there's that a little closer up and it does look really good. Um, but I made this kind of structure for going over our entranceway. And I'm wondering if that's good or not. Maybe you'll let me know what you think. Does it block too much of the scenes? Does it hamper our view of the pigs? I think if we zoom out a bit, it doesn't look too bad. So you'll have to tell me if you think overall that that is a good idea or a bad one. But um, before you decide, you better see the rest of it. So I found this sticker sheet from an old police station, which is set 60141. Uh, and the sticker I've used is missing from there uh, and it was actually a doormat um, but it says welcome home and I thought that that might be a very appropriate thing to have on the top of the gate kind of welcoming you home so how about that or it could be almost like a, a nice sort of warm welcome to visitors to the farm welcome home kind of like they uh, do at some uh, holiday resorts uh, and uh, so that's a great suggestion so thanks very much for that and another suggestion was to use a set of uh, cow horns on an old cow skull which is often common well more in the United States than the UK but I quite like the idea and I actually already had this piece with nowhere to use it so I kind of thought I could integrate that with the sign as well so I've got a modified brick on the underside there so that can make part of the entranceway so thanks very much for that idea so what do we think of that 
I kind of like it. It might need raising a little bit in height. I don't know if our tractor can get her through there. I think the vet's in the way anyway, but um, if it was old, it'd probably be very tight. So, you know, I quite like it. Uh, kind of something tall in the foreground, which is often a good idea because you kind of have to peer around it and kind of look left and look right. So, yeah, I think I'll keep it for now at least, but do tell me what you think. Uh, and there is that gate, of course. Yeah, all looking good. Right, so now I think we can start on the field because I think once this whole area here at the front is filled with a crop, uh, it'll look much more colourful and we'll see what space we've got left for other stuff. Now the crop I wanted to include, I didn't want to spend the earth trying to produce because uh, if I do it with some really niche or complicated part, then it's going to cost an absolute fortune to do enough of it. Uh, but I also wanted it to be very colourful. So what I've decided to do is corn. Uh, and to do corn, you can do it very well just using loads and loads of old flower stalks and one by one round bricks in yellow. And basically you get a stack of the stalks like this, any number really, two, three or four look good. And then you put one of the one by one round bricks on the top and it kind of looks like a corn on the cob that is growing out of the top. And then you can have absolutely loads of these kind of in rows. I think it looks better when they're slightly sort of staggered like this. Uh, and then very quickly, well, I say very quickly, after you've built them all, it's very quick. You can kind of start to build up a bit of a field. And I think that has the uh, height that I need. And I think it's got a lot of color and a lot of texture as well. So imagine that whole area is filled with corn. I think it'll look really good. So then I was thinking ahead to the fact that we're going to have uh, alien visitors in and around the farm. So I thought about doing some crop circles. A lot of you suggested doing that, but it was always in the plan because uh, <laughs> I've got a flying saucer, quite frankly, so it, it has to happen. Um, and I was trying on a spare base plate to put in a circle. So you can see here's a much greater expanse of corn. Uh, but I think the circle gets a bit lost because you can see there's the middle bit of the circle. And then I thought I'd put uh, an outer, slightly bigger circle around the outside. And obviously that's not complete, and it would be. And then it'd be surrounded by the rest of the field itself. But very quickly, especially at an oblique angle, you really can't see it at all. So I'm not sure if that's worth it. Does it look much like a crop circle? I mean, usually crop circles are completely flattened, of course, uh, you know, when they've been trodden down, because obviously they're made by humans and not by aliens in real life. Um, so I could completely remove all of the centre ones, or I could even have a few bits sort of lying down as if somebody had stomped on them, but I'm not sure that'll look great either. So I think for today, I'm tempted not to bother Shock Horror with a crop circle at all, and maybe just fill it in with regular field uh, and see if anyone's got a better suggestion of how to do it. I think if I had a uh, loads of uh, wheat or something like that that was all on um, sort of aerial pieces or something it'd be a lot easier to do circles with but um, yeah I, I really like the texture of this for a crop so I think that trumps everything else so I'm just going to use normal crop I think uh, unless I change my mind in the next five minutes as is possibly very likely and when I do that I think I'll add the series 11 scarecrow into the mix and he's a wonderful series minifigure. I really like him. Uh, and he's got a crow on his hat. And he's got a nice uh, pitchfork here. And wonderful old tatty clothes because he's all stuffed with straw. And I've just mounted him on a 1x2 green brick because I think I'll need him to be quite tall. Let's say I put him at the centre of this circle uh, to sort of be seen from a distance, kind of like that. But I think you'll agree that looks absolutely amazing. Or well, maybe I will keep a circle and just have him in the middle of it. I don't know. I'll try it out. Cool. So as an alternative to the rings that I tried before that I didn't really like, I've uh, just done a hole in what I've started here as my field. Uh, and I'm not entirely sure I like it either. Uh, I'll probably leave it there for a little bit. But I do like the field itself. I mean, look at that. I really wanted the lines and the rows. 
and I really wanted the splash of colour uh, and I really wanted it on a diagonal angle uh, and it kind of is. It's kind of three studs along and one over so it's uh, an even more unusual angle to see in Lego. But I think when I've used the rest of these, of which I've got that many left, uh, I should have the best part of a really good sized field I think uh, with still enough room for I don't know a few more features around the outsides as well. So yeah I'll keep going around this uh, hole and, and, and maybe it'll look a bit better when um, it's more deep in the field but yeah if you've got a great suggestion do let me know. Now before I go too much further with this field I do actually want to put in another feature. Uh, I did have comments that I didn't have enough tractors in that there's only one here. I do have a red one on my city's road 7634 the red tractor that's similar to the brand new one of this year um, but I thought I could add another one uh, and I did have suggestions to add a really old one which is exactly what I was always going to do uh, which is this sort of older style tractor which I think is really great and it's got some fantastic sort of dilapidated sort of looking stickers all over it as well so I thought I'd add that kind of just maybe against this fence as another detail and maybe that's become disused uh, and is you know broken down and maybe I could just add some sort of bushes and weeds around it just to show that it's all sort of been grown around uh, and then do all of the field right up to the edge of it. Uh, so that is a tractor from the uh, Batman set actually, Scarecrow Harvest of Fear from 2011 and that's 76054. But I think it's a really good look and a nice splash of colour uh, in an otherwise sort of quite green area. So yeah, I'll do that. Well, I can tell you that that is not a job that I would want to do twice. Uh, not only is it really sort of repetitive and quite fiddly, but it's actually quite a stretch from where I'm standing in a standing hole. So I think I'm going to have a very sore and tired back after this. Uh, but I really like the red tractor kind of buried in the edge of the field. And you can see I've also added a old octan barrel, which looks pretty good as well, I think, in keeping with the sort of a rundown area on a farm. And I moved it along a little bit just so it wasn't blocking that gate that we did earlier. I realized I plonked it right in front of the gate. But um, this color at the front, slightly not flat because we've got the odd tall stalk and the odd short stalk. But the color in this flat area really draws in your eye, I think, into the farm scene. And I think it looks really great with that splash of red in it and uh, indeed the scarecrow uh, at the front there. So I think that is a really, really good scene. It's exactly what I wanted. Kind of regular, but irregular at the same time, if that makes sense. So uh, we've still got a few empty areas we've got uh, in here. We've got uh, all of this area around the back, and I do have plans for those. Uh, and I've got even more things lined up for today as well. Uh, one was a suggestion I was going to do already, which was a water tower. Thanks for that. Uh, and I've just done that with two of these rather cool support pieces, which I actually had laying around uh, from the old station, I think, 60050. Uh, and I've just added a ladder on there that doesn't go all the way down, but I think that's probably enough to reach the bottom rung. And one of these really large barrel pieces on the top. Uh, and I was thinking of putting that near the front. So we've got another tall item. But you can see that I can't put that there uh, without blocking the wonderful chicken egg scene. So I think I might move the chickens yet again to maybe here centrally near the tractor so we can definitely see them because I think that's a, a really funny one because I do also like that water tower there. Uh, another one that you suggested was to add a horse. And on his farm he had a horse. And there is a lovely brown horse. So I thought that could just be, I don't know, somewhere kind of random just trotting around, not in a paddock, just, uh, you know, doing what he fancies really, much like the dog. It's a very chilled out farm, far corner farm. Yeah, so I think that's looking really good. Right, I better move those chickens uh, because that's the best scene in the whole thing. All right, so here it is post shuffle and there's the water tower where I said, but it was blocking that gate again. <laughs> so I moved that along for once and for all, hopefully. Uh, and now we've got the horse leaning over it to get to the long grass 
which is always more tasty. The grass you can't quite reach. Uh, and then I've used uh, remaining stalks just to break up that great big brown strip uh, at the edge there of the fence. Uh, I'm not wedded to that, but it's good for now. It's good to have these little sticks of green kind of breaking it up. Uh, and the wonderful chicken scene is right at pride of place now, kind of blocking a bit the cat and the rat, but that's not so important. Uh, and I think we can see that from everywhere. And if I just pan out, I mean, it's a really colourful uh, area and it's really packed and stacked just the way I like it. You just don't know what to look at first, really. Uh, and I'm not even done. I've got another sort of half a dozen ideas yet to do. Uh, but I don't think I've got time to do them all today. Um, but what I will do today is the vehicle of the week. I mean, technically, I could say that the tractor was the vehicle of the week or that the quad bike was the vehicle of the week. But I think I'll do instead a cargo truck. Uh, and that is from set 60052, which is the cargo train. Uh, and the reason why I've picked that is because I want it to be leaving the farm with some produce. So I've got a couple of crates here that I've joined together with six long tiles because I think it kind of looks good when they've got part of uh, a lid on. And we've got some red apples in one and some green apples in the other. Uh, and I can mount both of those crates onto kind of a pallet, a wooden pallet uh, that is just made of a four by six and two one by four plates in tan. Uh, and I've already done that with some different colored crates here for another pair. Uh, and what have we got in here? We've got red and pink cherries in one. And what are those? I don't know. They could be cabbages or something like that. They're actually a, a Technic ball piece in lime with just another one of those um, plant bracelet type pieces at the top to kind of act as a stem. So then I can have both sets of produce. I'll have to push that down more firmly in a minute. Uh, kind of on the back of this cargo truck going through the arch, probably right onto the road, I reckon, because otherwise I'm going to be blocking that wonderful pig examination scene. Uh, and it kind of shows the arch with the wonderful welcome home sign in action. Yeah, I think that's good. So that is our vehicle of the week. And it makes the scene just even more busy. Wow. Uh, I think there's definitely going to be a part three of Farm Fridays. Uh, because I've got too many ideas to do uh, and still a couple of bits of base plate can still be seen so I'm clearly not finished. Well I don't know how long this video is at the time of filming at least uh, but it's been a marathon session that's for sure mainly uh, comprising the building of this wonderful cornfield with all of these millions of uh, heads of corn uh, but we've done absolutely loads of things, really. I mean, if we start at this end, we did a few amendments to the cattle grid. We've added our vehicle of the week, a wonderful cargo vehicle, taking loads of fresh produce to the cargo area that doesn't yet exist. We've got a little bit more surplus for sale directly to the public. And I really like that sign. It's, it's a scene that you do see um, around. We've got the style on the uh, walkway there. We've got this lovely new arch with the skull of the cow, which is a bit scary for the uh, two cows, Daisy and Buttercup. Um, but we've got the wonderful welcome home sign, which I really like now. That was totally unplanned until I got that suggestion, uh, but it's one of my favorite features now, I think. So I like that, I think that's the here to stay. Uh, the enlarged pig pen, a bit more space for the uh, boys there and um, girls as well. And we've got loads of mud in there. We've got the examination scene, from the vet who's visiting. Then obviously we've got the huge field complete with scarecrow and crow on his head, which is quite funny. The wonderful long fence with the gate almost at the far end, which has got a nice horse, which we haven't actually named, have we? So I have to do a naming competition for the horse. Name that horse. Uh, a quad bike. Oh, an owl. We haven't named the owl. And on his farm, he had an owl. Didn't do the song either. Uh, and then we've got a water tower, an old barrel, and an old red tractor with some weeds growing on it in the field as well. And sort of a crop circle. Now, that's what I need your opinion on most of all. Is that good enough? Is there a better way of doing it? 
I'm a bit lost on this one, I must admit. But uh, next time we'll have to uh, add the reason for the crop circles uh, and a few more details as well. So I think there definitely will be another Farming Friday. Woohoo! <coughs> Well, there were so many scenes that we've added today that I actually forgot to summarise one, and that was the uh, hen house with the funny scene about the man who's got one egg and one ginormous egg. So that's really good. I really like that. Uh, but I think we've done a lot today. I think it's looking great. It's looking really colourful, really full of texture. I mean, if the fairground next to this looks uh, that detailed and that busy uh, and is about, phew, I don't know, 10 times the size... It's going to be a really interesting side of the room for sure. So as always, thank you very much for watching. It is appreciated. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. And if you value this channel, there are many ways in which you can support it. Do check out the links in the description below. Uh, and next time on Robin Hood Bricks, I'll have to look at my uh, list of things that I've got ready to go which isn't that long at the moment because we're having postal problems in the UK at the moment with uh, everything that's going on. Uh, so I'm a bit behind on getting fresh pieces to finish things off, but I'm sure we'll get to something interesting. Maybe we'll revisit the trains. I don't know uh, if I've got everything I need for that. But nonetheless, whatever we do, I'm sure it'll be wonderful. Uh, so see you then. <laughs>